Okay. So basically what we have here is a cardinal on Birch. So I'm going to show you the basics of how it's done. And I have everything lined up basically on the table here. Uh, what we generally start with is um, this. A lot of stuff I get from Home Depot or a building supply uh, company. I get this wire, um, other thicker wire, and uh, zippets, things like that, because it has to be held together and held together real good. I don't want anything coming apart or otherwise. So this is nice and sturdy. This is basically the inside of the branches. So each branch, all of these are separate on this. So all of these attach to that with wire. So I basically start with molding wire around so it looks like a branch. Comes with practice. And what you can do with all of this is you can take this stuff and you can be pretty heavy with it. Turn it and shape it because it'll keep its shape, whatever you want to do with it to a certain point. There's tricks to everything. I'm not going to go into total detail, but. And then what you can do with this is you can bend this yet so it becomes it's not always straight. So how I try to get it off the wall is by bending it like that so it actually starts doing that rather than having it straight. So I try to think of how it would look like in nature. So I can go in my backyard and that's where I got the idea for birch is I was outside with a dog one day and looking up, hello, I remember you from looking up at the beautiful birch going, oh my lord, that would be beautiful to do, especially for fall colors of the leaves and all that, gold and they have some some reds and something like that. So, so far I've done just gold. We'll, we'll move into the reds um, later. But it starts with this. This is the, the foundation basically of everything that I do is chicken wire is what they call it. You can get it with wider holes, but this is the smallest that they have and it works fine for me. So, um, this stuff can be cut with these snips so you can cut it whatever I want to cut it to if I don't need all that. It can come off like that and still be shaped and use these for shaping more inside there. I try not to use my bare fingers because I can, my fingers cut up. I can come up with all kinds of reds and I get bloody all over the place. So I've, I have learned my lesson to use my tools and not get my fingers all beat up and all that. I think I have more of this. So you can cut these in whatever length you want. I usually cut them shorter depending on what I want. You can cut them down like this and run them around so that once you get them into a, another tube, you can bend them where you want and it comes out to you just keep on adding on to that, which I use wire. I use these. These get fastened on to, once I shape this, they would get attached onto this. That always hangs on a wall, which always has to face out. So I always get a member that this is facing out and build everything from there. Um, sometimes I want a long one. So this is long. If I want to make it longer than that, I have a wire 
that I put in there to keep it wire nice and sturdy so this can go inside of here get in there so that believe it or not these do start getting heavy and it will start sagging stuff so you got and then you have the weight going against the wall outside of the wall so you got I got to remember weight I've always got to keep that in my head so the more of these I put on the more anything I put on and then I'm going to be putting foil on here foil goes on here, that's weight, and then the leaves are going to be weight. So the longer I go, the more sag there's going to be. So I'm always thinking a lot of steps. If I want to do something big and long, it has to be supported somehow. And it has to be supported good, because this is going to hang in people's houses. I don't want anything drooping or anything coming apart or anything like that. So I make sure that they're good and solid when they're put together with wire, uh, sometimes zippets, because zippets are nice and tight, if I can hide it. And hiding is my biggest thing. If I can hide all of anything. So with birch, birch was very difficult. Birch was pushing the limits because this down here, this is regular, um, wood like this so it's it's not that difficult to do for me that's hard because it's smooth and it's white so it, it took a lot of thinking on how do you staring at a picture of, of birch and how does this oh my word how do you do this so you see how different this is than this this is very smooth white and this isn't so So what I found with birch is that in every um, branch, there is a black piece that's always with the branch. Here, at, at all the joints in the branches, there's always black. There's actually more black in the branches than what I put on there, but I like the, the balance between the black and the white. It's an artistic thing. There's actually a lot more black. So with the black, I use Uh, the fabrics that basically looks like the black on a birch so I try to get stuff that looks as close as possible with what the tree is supposed to be so I'm kind of getting ahead of myself but this goes on the joints so then I can hide all of this stuff I hide everything mine, mine is I can do it but how do I hide it that's always my question, how do I get to hide, hide it to where it still looks right, you know. And that was the biggest problem with these and hiding the lines. Birch has lines in it, how it grows. It, it only grows like th this far within each section or something. And then there's like a, a smooth line. I'm going, I can do all this, but now how am I hiding the line now? It always comes back to how am I hiding something. So, hiding the line, um, gets cut with very thin pieces of uh, white fabric and gets attached to the line, which becomes smooth, and then I can hide that with more black. It's, um, let me see. I can go to fabrics. I started with tile. Tile was pretty limited for color. Um, I was doing different birds in tile. And when I met my wife, uh, she is a quilter. So she got me uh, involved in her quilting. And I saw how many colors there were for fabrics. and it opened my eyes to I'd rather do this kind of stuff than the tile. Tile was dirty and everything else. But these are basically a lot of the colors that I use. She knew the fabric and everything, yeah, so I learned everything from her. So 
I use bits and pieces of things. So where her, her fabric is nice and cut real nice and everything that she, she uses for quilts, mine has holes all over it because I use, um, I will use like the eye out of that. I'll cut that out and use it. That is here to make it look more like a real center of a wood. So that's, my stuff is all cut up and, and used like that. So whatever I need, so I can look at uh, different fabrics and I can use the color out of, if I just want this, I'll just use that. Or I can just use that for shading. It's a great shader, like for him. He's a shade. So I can take something like this, and even something like this, and shade him with little bitty pieces. Or any color, reds, greens, whatever the bird is. I, he's supposed to, he really, he really hangs upside down is what he's gonna do. So, um, but that's an idea of how, all of this comes together. If I can get three different shades, especially in these kind of fabrics, I can shade it, all those colors down, and they blend real nice. No, I buy these. These are off-the-shelf fabrics. Yeah, they're, they're different. So that's what, this is a fabric for him down here. So that, that would be a, you know, you can buy a yard, whatever yard you want, off the boat. Um, this, these colors would be heron colors. These can be colors, like for him. So then I can blend a couple different colors for him, where he's darker here, lighter there. So it really works out that way. These are, um, everything basically is predicated off of this. I can't get that out. This is heat and bond. So everything I do is based off of heat and bond. Anybody that sews or anything knows basically what heat and bond is. You can heat it to a surface, to something, it'll stick. You peel off this waxy here, and then what I do is I take this and heat it down to something, and it'll stick to basically anything. It's a little tougher on metal. I gotta rough up metal a little bit to get it to stick, but it works. There's all kinds of tricks. Actually, sometimes it's not even attached to the metal, it's attached to itself. It gets very complicated. 